Deferred compensation is a benefit that's available to most corporate executives. Hi, I'm Michelle Smallenberger with Financial Design Studio, and today that's what we're talking about. We're going to cover a few key items with deferred compensation. So first, what it even is and when to use it. Secondly, what are some key timings around taxes, but also then decisions that you need to make when you're going to decide to use this. And then finally, we're going to touch on some pros and cons for this benefit and how it affects your financial plan. Very simply, deferred compensation is income that you are earning today and you're choosing to defer that to some point in the future. Now there's really two reasons or two big reasons why people want to use this as a benefit. First is just tax savings. So very simply, if today I'm in the 37% bracket, income tax bracket, because of my high income, I may choose to defer some of this income into a time when I might be in a lower tax bracket, for example, the 24% bracket, because you can see that there's some meaningful dollars that I can keep by paying taxes at a lower rate. Secondly, Another reason that people might want to use this as a benefit is maybe you just need some additional savings for the goals and the expenses that you're going to have in retirement or the future in general. Because maybe your social security or your 401k savings isn't enough. You just need a little bit more. And so to fill up that gap, you might de- you might decide to use deferred compensation to give you that additional money you need. Now, I mentioned that there's some key timing that you need to be aware of from a tax perspective. And there's really a few different types of taxes that we're talking about when we're talking about the taxes that you can save. So first, there's FICA taxes. Now, this is the Medicare and Social Security percentage that is withheld from all of your paychecks. If you choose to defer some of your income into a future year, you are still going to pay FICA taxes today. So even though it's being deferred, you're earning that money now, so you're gonna pay those FICA taxes now. Now your federal and your state taxes are actually going to get paid at a future date. And this is because you're not actually receiving this money. So you're earning it today, but you're deciding that you're gonna receive it in the future. So that's when you're gonna pay your federal and your state taxes on this income. Now, one key thing that you want to keep in mind, and one of the one of the really big benefits of deferred compensation is that you don't have a limit. The IRS doesn't set a limit for how much you can defer. So this means that you could really put aside a meaningful amount. Now, your company might have in their plan, they might say that you could defer up to 70, 80, or 90%. So it is possible that they might have a limit, but as far as the IRS is concerned, you can defer an unlimited amount. This is really different than things like IRAs, 401ks. And so this could be something that makes this plan really flexible for you. Now, even though there's no limit for how much you can defer, remember when I said we can defer it into the future, but one thing you have to be really careful about is that there isn't an undoing of this. This is just not possible. Once you have elected to defer this income into the future, it's an irrevocable decision, meaning that it can't be changed. So this money can't be undone. Now, there is one thing we'll talk about of a way or a factor that you can change within this, but it is not the undoing undoing of an election to defer income. So let's talk through some key decisions that you need to make if this is something that you decide is for you. First is just, should I defer any income? Is this something I should use? And if you decide that it is, you also need to know that you have to decide when you want to receive that income in the future on the date that you're deferring it. So if I'm filling out my paperwork now, I've gotta say when it is that I want to receive it at a future date. It's hard because no one knows the future, so these are decisions we're making and it's really important to have that plan in place. Now, when you're deciding when you're gonna receive this income in the future, it's important to know that you actually can receive this deferred income before your age 59 and a half. And that age might sound familiar to you because that's the age that you have to wait to start taking money out of an IRA without a penalty. If you take out money before age 59 and a half with an IRA, 
have a 10% penalty. So this is something that's flexible for you that you could be taking money out before age 59 and a half. Maybe you're someone who wants to retire at age 55 or some year before 59 and a half. This could be something that could give you some of the income you're gonna need in those years. Now, finally, one of the tricky parts is not just should I defer and until when, but when I start to receive that income in the future that I'm deferring, how do I want to receive it? So do I just want to get a lump sum of this year's amount in that future year, or do I want to receive it in installments? So I could say this amount I'm deferring for next year, give it to me in the future, maybe at retirement, but give it to me over a span of five years or 10 years or 15. So you can see there's lots of options here. You could choose when you want to receive it, or maybe it's even just at retirement that you want to get this income. You can see here that there's some key decisions you have to know well in advance before you're going to start getting this money. I just want to pause because you can clearly see or you can start to see that a financial plan is so important because that's the plan that gives you the clarity so when you're deciding these things you have confidence to know you're making the right decision for the plan that you want for the rest of your life. Okay, before we finish our last item of what pros and cons of deferred compensation are, I just wanna point you to a really helpful resource that we've created that gives you even more detail about deferred compensation as a benefit to you. We've got a blog post that details all of this information and so much more. It gives you examples of what it might actually look like when you defer the income into the future because if you're deferring income year after year, then you wanna see how this income is gonna add up in the future to make sure that you're not in a higher income tax bracket or the same income tax bracket, but you actually want to make sure that this is benefiting you. So you'll want to go grab that blog post on our blog at financialdesignstudio.com. Now let's dig into this last point here. There are a lot of advantages, but there also are some really serious disadvantages that you'll want to consider before you decide to make an election. We've already talked about some of these. So the tax savings that you can get by deferring income and then tax deferred growth. We haven't talked about the fact that this income you're deferring can actually be growing because you can make investment choices that allow this money to grow even further if you want. Now, one of the things we touched on was how early retirement income could actually be benefited by this because of that prior to age 59 and a half limitation that you have with things like IRAs, but you don't have that with deferred compensation. Now, one last thing that we didn't touch on in detail, we talked about tax savings, but here we're gonna talk about some state tax savings. So let's assume that you're someone that lives in a high income tax, like state income tax rate right now because of where you're working but in the future you could see yourself moving to a different state that has a lower income tax for states or it has no income tax for that state if you are someone who's considering that then this is something you want to pay attention to if you're gonna move you need to make sure that the option you choose for that deferred income is at least 10 years. So this means that you're gonna to need to choose that installment option so that you're receiving it over 10 years or more. If that's you, then your state tax rate can actually be the state that you have moved to, the one you live in when you're receiving this income, rather than the state that you lived in when you earned the income. And that could be even more tax savings for you. So that's one you wanna pay attention to if you're considering moving. Now, let's switch to some of the negatives or the drawbacks of a deferred compensation plan. One of the biggest reasons that corporate executives decide not to use deferred compensation is that the money you defer into the future is actually not guaranteed to be there for you. The IRS allows this to be an option for you because there has to be a substantial risk of forfeiture. Now, what that means is that there's a substantial risk that you could lose this money because the money you're deferring actually gets put not into an account just specific to you, but it actually just stays as part of company money that they have available to pay their creditors. So if your company isn't doing well, 
And that money you're deferring into the future could actually get used by them to pay their bills or if they go into bankruptcy this would be money that's available to pay creditors rather than to pay you that deferred income that you actually earned and set aside that's what it means to have a substantial risk of forfeiture there's a substantial risk that you could lose it and if you don't think that this is possible back in 2012 Kodak was an example, and in 2008, Chrysler was an example where these companies went bankrupt and the deferred compensation that was elected by individuals was actually not received by them. While this doesn't happen that often, it is a very real risk that we evaluate for someone before choosing to use deferred compensation as a part of your plan. The company you work for is really important. Now next, if you're gonna make a change, remember I said you couldn't undo an election. That is irrevocable. However, if you've made that election, and let's say that you decided you wanna receive that income at retirement, you can choose to defer it to a different date. It just has to add five years from the original date that you were deferring it to. Now, this just adds a little bit more risk on top of the already risk that we're taking. And what this means is if I'm gonna defer it because I, I realize that I've got a lot of income I'm deferring until my retirement date, so I'm gonna have another really big tax bill, well, if I want to change some of those elections, I have to move them out at least five more years. And this can start to get a little bit riskier because we already don't know the future. So now to add five more years on top of that might just be something that might kind of hinder you from using this. Now, investment options that you have, we mentioned that this could be invested. However, sometimes like our 401ks, we aren't really given great investment choices. So this is something you'll want to consider if you're choosing to use this. And then unforeseen financial needs. So just a disadvantage is that I elected to defer my income, but I actually need that money. And so we can't undo it. So this is something that, again, it's just a drawback. It's a disadvantage of using this plan. Now, you might decide that for all of these reasons combined, it's still right for your plan. And for some people it is, but these are things that you just want to be aware of. So please take a look at that blog post because we've actually got 10 key questions to ask yourself when you're evaluating this plan and whether it's a right benefit for you. Please remember to subscribe to our channel to watch other videos that come out in the future. Thanks again for listening.